Blog Talk Radio. This is the Light of Truth Radio Broadcast with Michael Boldea. All right, welcome to the program and thank you for joining us. This is the Light of Truth Radio Broadcast. I am your host, Michael Boldea. And uh, although, once again, we are not live, we're very close to it. Uh, we're, we're live adjacent. Uh, if uh, we were a... I guess body, we would be mistaken for being alive. I don't know. I'm trying to come up with new ones every week. It doesn't work, but that's okay. I keep trying. That's the one thing we can do is just keep trying. Today is June the 25th, 2020, so that you might know that I am not fibbing. Yes, this is uh, Thursday afternoon, and uh, we're recording this because, one, uh, I enjoy having dinner with my family. And uh, two, every time we try to go live, uh, something goes amiss. I don't know. Either there's construction out front or the Internet's not working. So better safe than sorry because there are a lot of things for us to discuss. There are a lot of things for us to talk about. Um, and uh, I... Every week, man, it's going to just be a bummer. I'm sorry. I can't. There's, there's no happy news. Uh, you know, uh, a, a calf was not nursed by a giraffe in the wilds of Africa. Uh, we don't have any pictures of uh, cute puppies uh, thinking that, you know, a cow or a pig is its, their mother. Uh, it, the world seems to be bent on bleakness it it seems to be bent on just a continued persistent non-stop just depressive sadness and just uh, look i imagine how people will be when things get really out of hand imagine how people will be when things get really hard because right now, people are beside themselves, and, and, and life's not that difficult. If you have two neurons rubbing together in your head, and you know how to sign your name, and you can say yes, sir, and no, sir, you can find a job in America, even with everything that's been going on for the past few months. I'm seeing the now hiring signs start to pop back up uh, in, in, in front of corporations in front of businesses. Uh, But imagine how people will react and and how they will be when inevitably it gets worse. Uh, Because it will. It has to. The Bible tells us that it will and that it has to. And for the longest time, the church has sat on the sidelines. Uh, The people of the household of faith have decided that they were going to be Switzerland about at all. And so they weren't going to say a thing. They weren't going to do a thing. Let them hash it out. We're so heavenly minded. All we see is Jesus upon the throne. Hallelujah. Let them hash it out. Well, guess what? Um, I've got two pieces of news that I want to get into so that you might understand, even if you are reticent, even if you are unwilling, even if you don't want to, get involved, uh, you're going to have no choice unless you, you know, I mean, I don't know, deny Jesus, crawl in a hole somewhere and hope to, you know, not starve to death is I honestly, uh, the first bit of news. And, uh, this is exactly what we need, by the way, uh, when everything is going, uh, to hell in a handbasket, when uh, hopelessness seems to have robbed people of any joy, what we really need is for communities to get rid of churches because everyone knows if there is a negative influence upon the general populace, it is those church-going folk, the ones with their potluck lunches and the ones handing out food and the ones handing out clothes. They are the ones that are dragging everything down. 
the city of Salinas, California. I mean, you know, it was expected that it start here, but this is just the beginning. Because what so many uh, peace-loving Christians, so many tolerant Christians fail to understand is even though you might have a live and let live mindset, the other side does not. And if someone is intent on your destruction and you're sitting there trying to give them a hug, it's not going to work out too well for you. So the city of Salinas, California, is forcing an evangelical Christian church to sell its downtown property, saying it does not fit in with the new look of the town. Let me pause here, and uh, if you haven't heard, uh, the city of Seattle has just decriminalized drug sales and prostitution. Because apparently that's the kind of look uh, the western part of the country wants. That's, that's the look that would fit into the new town. People with needles in their arms and prostitutes trying to get a little money. Because, you know, we don't want people with those button-up shirts and khaki pants with their wives and their children holding hands in their summer dresses walking into a church of all places. That doesn't fit with the look of the town. No, what we want is dirty, dingy, drug-addicted losers that pee at the corner of the building, if not worse, that will strong-arm rob anybody passing by, that will spray-paint any bare service because apparently they're like dogs trying to Mark their territory. That's what Salinas, California wants as the look of its town. But a Christian church? An evangelical Christian church? Now, that doesn't fit with the new look of the town. So all you passive, you know... Uh, spineless Christians that I, I'm not going to get involved and it's just going to pass right over me and they're just going to leave us alone if we leave them alone. Buenos dias. Wake up. This is what is happening in America. The city of Salinas, California is forcing an evangelical Christian church to sell its downtown property saying it doesn't fit with the new look of the town. New Harvest Christian Fellowship bought the building in early 2018 after its congregation outgrew a space the church had been renting for more than 25 years. How dare they? How dare they grow their congregation? How dare they present a message of hope and salvation to the loser deluxes of Salinas, California? This needs to be stopped. We need to put an end to this. We can't have people digging themselves out of the gutter. We can't have people digging themselves out of the booze bottle and out of the heroin needle. That'll do away with our constituents. We need to put an end to these evangelicals. Look at that. They've grown. They've been steadily growing for 25 years. Finally, the church outgrew its space. And they bought, they purchased with legal U.S. tender a building in Salinas, California. But now they have been told to sell their property because, hey, All you goody two-shoes Christians just don't vibe with the vibe of Salinas. We like the dirty and the smelly and the dingy and the sweaty. We like people in flip-flops whose toenails have never seen a, a, a cuticle cutter. How dare you try to inject morality and decency, sir, into Salinas, California. 
A new city ordinance prohibits houses of worship from occupying the first floor of downtown buildings, the Christian Post reports. Yes, because you know what? I, the Christian Post and all these other Christian magazines, just worthless, absolutely worthless, because they're unwilling to take a stand for anything meaningful. They go along with any idiocy that, that, that's popular. But hey, please consider a yearly subscription to the Christian Post for forty nine ninety nine. And then we can tell you how it's not Jesus-like not to bow and scrape before people pillaging your town. I'm in one of those moods. I don't know if you can tell, but it's, uh, it's just, it's gotten to the point where I, I can't hold it in anymore. Because I look at what's happening, and I look at the silence of the church, and I even look at, at, at how a lot of the church is going along with this thing that is not about black lives, and it's not about disadvantaged people. This is communism, plain and simple. This is what they want. We're going to get into it. Because apparently some people within the church still don't get it. They want what they want, and they won't take no for an answer. And what they want is control. What they want is power. It's not equity or equality. It's power. But let's get back to this church in California, because this this and another thing that I want to talk about should sort of bring the fight to your doorstep. Because up until this point, Christians were like, well, they, it, you know, they're leaving us alone. Why should we care? Well, uh, one of the supposed leaders of the movement uh, just tweeted out this week that all murals and stained glass windows of Jesus and his European mother and their white friends should also come down because they are a gross form of white supremacy created as tools of white oppression, racist propaganda. They should all come down. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're leaving the churches alone, so why should we care? They're not, they're not, they're not, they're not. Because the more people acquiesce to the demands of the insane, the more the insane will demand. And right now, churches are next because of racist white supremacists. Oh, okay. So now, if churches are next, how long before Christians are next? Because let's just get into a little... History, shall we? So you understand the allegiances that these people have and how they're unwilling to see something that is starkly worse than Jesus' pigment on a mural. The founder of one of the largest religions in the world was not only a slave owner, but encouraged the owning of said slaves. If you know not of whom I speak, no, it is not Buddha. It was Muhammad, indubitably. The man who founded Islam, Muhammad, had slaves. Why is it anyone calling for the destruction, the tearing down of mosques in this country. Because between Christianity and Islam, one was a lot closer to slavery than the other. Jesus didn't own slaves. Muhammad did. But yet, Apparently, 
surprisingly, oh me, oh my, Islam gets a pass. Jesus and his European mother and their white friends that need to come down. It's not the remnants and the memory of a man who actually owned slaves and founded the religion of peace. Yes, Islam. But nobody wants to talk about it because right now, man, you'd be in the crosshairs from both sides. Can you imagine? I'm either very brave or very dumb because I've just managed to tick off two groups in this country. Well, let's just say have a common enemy. And this is one of those things that the church, again, seems not to be noticing, seems not to care. So you have a white gentleman pretending to be black, calling on the destruction of all statuary and murals and stained glass reminiscent of the white supremacy that is Jesus and the apostles. But not a peep about the mosques. Not a peep about the founder of Islam who owned slaves openly, encouraged others to do so. By the time some people in the church, I'm, t- today's going to be about the church, because, look, unless the church wakes up, it's, it's, it's a moot point. It's all gone. But by the time some people in the church wake up to what's really happening, I guarantee you it'll be too late. Because we either want to take people at their word or we're just that indifferent, or we're just that ignorant. I don't know. Take your pick. But man, all these things are aligning, and all these things are happening, and 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 we're, we're noticing this this mindset of my enemy's enemy is my friend, and the church is still there, just making little booger balls and flicking them at each other. Let's get back to. The California town, for whom, uh, well, Christians didn't fit in to their new look. The Pacific Justice Institute filed a lawsuit on behalf of the church arguing that the city's zoning code and denial of new harvests proposed use of its property treat new harvest on less than equal terms with non-religious assemblies and substantially burden religious exercise in violation of the Religious Land Use and Institutionalized Persons Act. And the city said, so what? Pretty much. A Northern California U.S. District Court ruled in favor of the city of Salina declaring on May 29th that churches generate limited interest, do not draw tourists, and therefore detract from the city's stated goals. You know what would draw tourists? Gladiator fighting. We should do that again. Just build a giant coliseum in the center of Salinas. Give two people a shiv and have them fisticuffs still only one is left standing. You'll draw a lot of tourists. Do you understand the level of depravity that you must have as a judge to say, eh, you're not drawing tourists. You don't need to be there. See, because it's not about the quality of human that the city of Salinas draws. Because once you remove God, and once you remove the Christian element, and once you remove churches, 
the vacuum that is created will be filled with pimps and hookers and drug dealers and drug users. Because this is the reality of the world we live in. And I'm sure that the citizens of Salinas who live around that church, you know, the coffee shops that sell those Christians with the button-down church, their lattes every Sunday morning, and that sell them their sandwiches once they leave service. They're going to look back on what the city of Salinas did and realize that they would have much rather had those ladies in sundresses and church hats who left generous tips and said, Lord bless you, dearie. Then drug users just, just high off of their rocker trying to be artists with their own feces. But you know what? Too late. See, there are certain things that can't be undone. These cities and these states are being solely to the point of being irreparable. And the decent folk, or the semi-decent folk, who can afford to leave are leaving. So basically, you're creating a mass of individuals that are either substance abusers or that make their living off of substance abusers who are readily given to violence and all manner of things. And somehow you think that will draw tourists to the Mecca known as Salinas, California. Because people, man, they're just, oh, they're, they're, they're six months out waiting on flights to walk through human feces in San Francisco, aren't they? Even the rats are leaving San Francisco. They're packing their bags and going, where are we going? I don't know. Mexico's close. Sure, why not? Can you imagine waking up every morning walking outside your door and being greeted with the smell of human waste. Step over a couple hypodermic needles. You beg off a couple half-naked homeless guys who want a couple bucks. You make it to work that morning and you're thankful that you didn't get stabbed or shot. Or that somebody didn't take a brick to your head and rob you in plain daylight. Why would you want to live in a place like that? But this is what these cities are becoming. Because the the one agent for good, the one institution that could have brought a little hope, that could have brought a little light, The church is being forced to sell its property and leave because, you know, our new look, it's all about strung out people who haven't bathed in three months. So your church and your ladies in sundresses and men in suits and ties, those are an eyesore. There are no tourists that will come to Salinas to see church folk. You know, two homeless naked people fighting over a half-eaten sandwich that a mouse is sitting on. Sure, that's a crowd pleaser any day of the week. Because that's the look we're going for in Salinas, California. According to the city, the purpose of its land use ordinance is to stimulate commercial activity within the city's downtown, indubitably. All the crack dealers and hair on dealers and weed dealers, they will surely stimulate the downtown and its economy, which has been in a state of decline. You don't say. 
Well, if you think it's been in a state of decline thus far, well, kitty cat, I got some news for you. It's going to look like just you, you just fell down an elevator shaft after you asked the church to leave. But there is a point that I was trying to get to by discussing the, the, these two different aspects. And the point is this. There are extremist judges legislating against the church from the bench. There are extremist provocateurs encouraging their, call them less than intellectual followers, to firebomb churches. And all the while, as they would say in California... Uh, Donde esta la iglesia? Now, if you are not a Spanish-speaking person like I am, that means, uh, where's the church? Because even though we've rested on our laurels thinking they're not going to come for us, uh, guess what? They're coming for you. It won't be long. Mark my words. Because the book tells us these are the things that will happen. The book tells us that this is the way that things will play out. So (laughs) the court noted that New Harvest's weekly schedule of activities includes a Sunday morning worship service. Oh, my. How dare they? Including a worship band and programs for children and teens. Tuesday evening worship, fun club for children ages three to four, because, yeah, no, that's, we can't have that. Kids ages three to four uh, learning about Jesus? No. They should learn how to inject heroin between their toes. A marketable skill. None of this religion stuff. It doesn't fit in to the new look, to the new vision, if you will, of Salinas. Some might suggest that the court's description of the church's program is the very definition of active and vibrant. Federal Magistrate Judge Susan Van Kulen ruled, however, that the city of Salinas did not violate Rulipa law because the city's zoning restrictions do not impose a substantial burden on the religious exercise of New Harvest. No, you're just forcing them to sell their building and meet elsewhere. So here you have an American city. The, the, the country with the monies, with the in God we trust on the monies. Remember? Remember that, huh? In God we trust on our money. Saying that if you're a church, uh, you're just less deserving of equal treatment under the law than anyone else. If you're a Christian, you are beneath them. If you're a Christian, you are subhuman to these people. But yeah, you really should take a knee and, you know, Repent for slavery that you had nothing to do with. Do that. Do that. Virtue signal. Virtue signal. Because if you do it well enough, they might leave you alone for a little while, huh? Silence is interpreted as acquiescence. And if they think that you're okay with what's happening, they're just going to keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Look, there are some very bad actors that want some very gnarly things to take place in this country. And they are doing everything they can to achieve their goal. The leader 
uh, or a leader. I don't know how many leaders there are because right now everyone's a leader. Um, the leader of uh, Black Lives Matter. And if you think that's what this is still about, then uh, I'm, I'm sorry for you. God bless. Godspeed. Have a good day. There's nothing left to discuss. But his uh, statement du jour, for those of you that do not speak French, that is of the day. His statement du jour is, if America doesn't give us what we want, we will burn down this system. But what you want is to burn down the system. So either we let you do it, or we do it ourselves. Is, is that what it is? There's, there's, there's no room for debate. There's no tete-a-tete, if you will. There's no dialogue. Because that, that's, remember, remember that word, oh, we need dialogue. We need to understand each other. And we need to understand each other's pain. This man knows no pain of, of a racial, racial intolerance. Come on. The nation went berserk over a garage pull. Thousands of people were marching in the streets. Oh my, this is horrid. How could it be? If you don't know, NASCAR driver Bubba Wallace, like a quarter black, if that. That boy looks whiter than I do. Says he found a noose in his garage at NASCAR. FBI came out to investigate it. Guess what the news was? It was a garage pull. This is how insane we've become. We're looking for racists in the bushes when most people in this country are decent folk who couldn't care less about someone's skin color if they're a decent human being. Who'd be glad to call you brother or sister? Regardless of melanin. But this is where we've come to a garage pull. Grown men weeping uncontrollably. Oh my, the racism! A garage pull. So let's, let's take a breath, shall we? Because this is spiraling. And these nefarious actors that we were talking about, they're seeing it as their opportunity. This is it, baby. We're going to get anything we want. What do we want? Power. When do we want it? Now. At whose expense? We don't care. And if you dare point out certain, I don't know, irregularities, well, then, then you're just, what, white, white privileged. We, we invent terms that have no factual basis. We invent terms so that stupid, guilty white people have a reason to burn down their own country. I'm... Uh, Just listen to this. So this this, this man, uh, he is the president of the Greater New York Chapter of Black Lives Matter. His name is Hawk Newsom. And he warned, yea, he warned that if the United States doesn't give us what we want, then we will burn down the system and replace it. So this is a back and forth between uh, a reporter and and Mr. Newsom. People watch what you say in that video that you now want to show legislation, to shove legislation down people's throats now that you have everyone's attention and you've also said violence is something necessary in these situations. What exactly is it that you hope to achieve through violence? And his answer is this, wow, wow. It's interesting that you would pose that question like that because this country is built upon violence. 
What was the American Revolution? What's our diplomacy across the globe? We go in and we blow up countries and we replace the leaders with leaders who we like. So for any American to accuse us of being violent is extremely hypocritical. And this shows you the man's IQ level. Room temperature, it is not. Far below, far below. But see, there's, there's always an excuse. But did, did you just burn down half a neighborhood and kill three people? Well, they, don't you know what they did to the Indians? Remember the Alamo? Something happened there. Yep, it, it, we're entitled to do it. And the thing that is just mind-blowing is that governors and mayors and elected officials who are supposed to uphold the rule of law are pretending as though these things are not happening in their towns. The other day, in, in, here in Madison, Wisconsin, an openly homosexual congressperson got the snot beat out of him by one of these protests. a statue of a man who was 32 years old when he died fighting against slavery. Let that sink in. A statue of a man who died fighting against slavery at the age of 32 was torn down and thrown into the lake. So this is where we are, kids. They're coming for the church. The church is silent, pretending as though they're not. And by they, I mean the people fueling the hate. The Marxists, the communists, the socialists, whatever you want to call them, however you want to slice it, you know exactly what I mean by they. Because when you watch the videos of the violent protests, the only commonality is that they're all young. There's black and brown and white, all wanting to be the next Che Guevara. Revolution, baby! But see, what Mr. Uh, Newsom doesn't seem to have grasped or taken into account is that if he's good for the goose, then, senor, it must be good for the gander, too. If violence is your answer, if violent is, violence is, is your solution, then allow it to be other people's response as well. Because there will be a breaking point in this country. I'm going to repeat that. So that when it happens, you'll go, hey, he got that one right too. There will be a breaking point in this country. And there are a lot of people in the shadows pushing for it. A city in Oregon just mandated that all its citizens wear masks outdoors except for African Americans. Now, most black folk that I know, decent, hardworking, family people, they don't like being pandered to in this manner. But think of the message that it sends. Think of how people stuck in their homes without jobs and very little prospects, with the media doing everything it can to try to have a resurgence of COVID, it's back. 
And it's all Trump's fault because he had a rally in Oklahoma, even though incubation is, what, 14 days. No, 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 sir, no. This, because they were all there and, and, and because they, they were all with, within the sphere of conservatism, it, it had an accelerated reaction. So if you're going out burning, looting, violating, killing, beating, uh, you're, you're corona immune. But for anything else, for any other reason whatsoever, if you go out without a mask, if you are not at least six feet apart from everyone, including your husband or wife or children, then you are a murderer. <gasps> how dare you? I can't believe how heartless you are. People are seeing this, kids. They're not blind to the inconsistency. And eventually, that bile is going to rise up in their throat. They'll try to swallow it back for as long as they can. But eventually, it's going to come out. And when it does, you don't want to be anywhere near a big city. There's... But see, this is, this, this, this is what the mob mentality does. It, it keeps people from taking a step back and analyzing a situation and going, all right, this isn't going to work out. No matter how we play this, we're still going to lose. Because if our city looks like little Mogadishu, nobody's going to come and deliver food. And we either start eating each other, or we try to migrate to the suburbs to get food. And guess what? The suburbanites aren't just going to sit back and go, oh, by all means. You've turned your downtown into a porta potty Come to the suburbs. We like porta potties too. There are still people in this country that are willing to fight for their families. I ain't so sorry. I'm one of them. I will defend my wife and I will defend my children. And you can call me unchristian and unloving and uncouth. I, I've been called so many things in my 45 years, your hair would catch on fire. But see, it's, it's easy to be a pearl clutcher, isn't it? Oh, my! The indignity of it all! Where is your powdered wig, sir? But when it comes to actually doing something of worth or Something of, no, 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 brother, brother. Let them work it out themselves. We shall sit back and wait upon heaven's chariots for the rapture. You have no idea how many emails and text messages I've gotten from uh, pre-tribulationists that are going out of their minds because in their estimation they shouldn't be seeing what they're seeing. And, and my only answer to them is if you think this is bad, you ain't seen nothing yet. Sorry to break the news. But unless I missed it, there hasn't been a rapture. And I know what you're thinking. Well, it hasn't gotten that bad yet, so we'll just sit back and wait a little more. You have legislators legislating that church folk are not the kind that they want around there. 
you have hoodlums, hooligans, and individuals that are leaders of prominent militant revolutionary groups saying that the next target is, uh, what is it, Jesus' European mama and white apostles and all them other church thingies. And I know that, you know, we're, we, we don't have statuary in our churches and we don't have stained glass. But there's been this, this saying that's gone around forever, and it was a German guy. We're going to get into that. I was actually planning on doing a deep dive into 1 Samuel 17 today, believe it or not, uh, because it, it, it's another one of those issues that I've been dealing with is, is believers going, well, when's the Lord going to call me up? When, when am I going to be on the front lines, brother? And uh, we, we're going to discuss it next week. How about that? We're going to get into to David and the fact that even though his only duty was to go deliver food for his brothers, he rose up early and went. Uh, it, it's, it, it, it's something that I've been, I guess, studying out. It, when I read my Bible in the morning, I, I've been in this chapter for the last week and a half, two weeks, and, and there's a lot of really cool stuff in it. Uh, but yeah, we're going to get into that next week. Because I was only going to mention the things that we talked about for the last 50 minutes for, I don't know, 15 minutes or so. But there's just, it, there's, there's, there's so much to unpack and you need to understand where you are. Where you stand. What your preparedness level is. Because these times aren't waiting for you to catch up. If you aren't caught up, catch up. Because the further back you fall, the harder it's going to be to catch up. The latest thing that I saw that... If if you can imagine... I, 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 what, what can you say about the Oakland Unified School, School District? One of the most violent districts in the country abolished its own police force at a school board meeting on Wednesday night, bowing to the wish of, wishes of radical left wing activists and the Black Lives Matter movement. So my question is this. If in the Oakland Unified School District they begin to see a rash of shootings, who do you think they're going to blame? Are they going to blame themselves and their stupidity and their myopia and their nearsightedness? Or are they going to blame gun owners? It's, it's converging. It's coming together. We're seeing the pieces of the puzzle come together. And the picture is getting clearer and clearer. The future is not looking bright. And the one thing that could help remedy the situation we find ourselves in, namely God, namely the household of faith, is being told to leave. Get out. Get out now. Because You don't fit in with the new look of our town. See, some people have surrendered to the darkness. And even the knowledge of the presence of light 
anywhere within their sphere makes them go ballistic. It's a church that bought a building in 2018. I guarantee you they weren't harming anyone. I guarantee you they had outreach programs and community outreach. But those that surrender to the darkness could not bear to live with the knowledge that in Salinas, California, there was a church downtown and it was growing. So this is where we're at. Next week will likely be something worse (laughs) because um, without repentance and without godliness and without an honest assessment of what needs to happen in this country in order for it to change course, um, It's all done, but for the fat lady singing, kids. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for being with us. Uh, We will be with you again next week, whether live or not. Remains to be seen. Some days I'm feeling frisky. And so I decided to come into the studios and do it live. But uh, two out of three times it ended up badly. So I'm trying to avoid it. But thank you for listening. Thank you for your prayers. May God bless you. May God keep you. And I know Gino wants to tell you a few things. He's going to be somewhere with Ann this weekend. But he'll, he'll, he'll tell it to you himself. God bless you, Gino. It's all yours. Thank you, Michael. I'm reminded of a scripture. The Lord said when he comes back, will he find faith? And the heart of many will grow cold. And that's what Mike's addressing. Church needing to stand up and oppose to prayer to proactivity, to gathering together and saying enough's enough, standing for the values that God calls sacred. And there's a lot we can do that we're not doing. And I can tell you that when people start threatening, get rid of this church or let's move this church or let's think about where we're at in America. And Mike's right, it's coming to the church. Better to stand up now than, you know, be a coward. And not have courage. You know the movie Courageous? Yeah, it's a movie. How about we live up to it? How about we stand for what we stand for? And I urge you to meet, meet, read Mike's blog. That's what I'm going to urge you to do. Go to Homeward Bound. Type in Michael Boldea blog. And start reading the blogs because he wrote a very powerful one, you know, about what's going on. And it is called... Uh, Because why not? I would urge you to check it out. I would urge you to really let God convict you. Because the devil should know who you are, and the devil should be fearful of you, of your walk, of what you stand for. Also, my wife and I will be in uh, Lapeer, Michigan, this Sunday. And I am quite sure my message will correlate a lot with what Mike's been sharing and Dimitri on the level of the warnings that God has given America. I'll be at New Beginnings Family Church, 1066 North Saginaw Street, Lapeer, Michigan, Sunday at 1030 in the morning. If you live in the Michigan area or even uh, close by in another state, please try to come. Um, Also, July 16th in Oconomowoc, Wisconsin, we are going to have a worship and prayer night on the Village of the Green, And August 1st in Wisconsin, we are going to have a Stand 2020 uh, rally in Wisconsin with conservative, bold leaders that want to stand for the Lord, including Mike will be sharing at the event. That will be in Wiscals. If you are interested in tickets, please email me at handofhelpoffice at aol.com. And we will surely try to give you tickets. The tickets are free. The only cost will be providing yourself with a fish fry at $22. It's at Trapper's Turn Golf Club in 
Wisconsin Dells. It is a rally you don't want to miss if you can make it. Please go to the Hand to Help website and please get the warnings out because, as Mike said, every week it gets more dicey out there. Thank you so much for tuning in. God bless you. And may the Lord be your strength and your hope. Thank you for listening to today's broadcast, The Light of Truth with Michael Baldea. If you would like to order a copy of today's broadcast, please visit our website at handofhelp.com. If you have questions about our ministry, you can email us at handofhelpoffice at aol.com or simply call us at 920-206-9910. God bless you. They are all